Hello everyone, this is Guy, and it's time for a video game review, and today's video game review is the newest Sonic game, which is Sonic Generations. And some of you probably noticed by now, hey, this game is released on the 20th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, as some of you may know, Sonic's 15th anniversary really sucked. I mean, let's face it, we got a really crappy Sonic game, and we got a really crappy remake of the original Genesis Classic. So could the same amount of suckage happen with Sonic Generations on the 20th anniversary? Let's find out. The story is about Sonic having a birthday party with his friends, when all of a sudden some giant generic monster comes out of nowhere and sucks up his friends into different time periods. While Sonic tries to fight him off, the monster hits him in the head and knocks him out unconscious. While Sonic wakes up, he suddenly realizes that he's in the year 1991, a year where the Super Nintendo was first released and Super Mario World was getting a 16-bit upgrade. But hey, don't worry Sonic fans, the first Sonic game was released on that same year as well, so it's all good. Anyway, back to the story. While Sonic is breezing through levels from previous Sonic games, he also rescues his friends. But along his journey, he also stumbles across himself from the past. Yes, he meets classic Sega Genesis Sonic. So classic Sonic and modern Sonic have to work together to relive all their past memories in order to save the day. Anyway, enough of the storyline, let's talk about the gameplay. The game itself is split up into two gameplay mechanics, with each character having their own style of gameplay. Each level in the game has their own two different types of levels for each character, the classic Sonic level and the modern Sonic level. However, you can choose which order you'd like to play it, so if you'd like to play the modern Sonic level first before the classic Sonic level, you can do that. The classic Sonic levels are traditional 2D side-scrolling platforming, just like the Sonic games on the Genesis. However, unlike the Genesis titles, the Spin Dash has a few changes. Not only is the Spin Dash very powerful, but you also have the option to just press the square button to do the Spin Dash. I love this feature because it's so much more convenient. In the Genesis games, you had to stop, duck, and then press the jump button to perform the Spin Dash, and it just slows down the game a bit. Yes, you can do the traditional way of spin dashing in Sonic Generations, but I think I'll just stick with the one button, thank you very much. There's one minor thing I should point out if you're a speedrunner. In the Sega Genesis Sonic games, when you roll down a slope, you can build up a lot of speed and momentum. But in Sonic Generations, when you roll down a hill, it only slows you down. Well, so much for that technique. But I guess that does explain why the spin dash is so powerful. The second character in the game is Modern Sonic, and this is a fun character to play as if you're trying to perform speedruns. Modern Sonic's gameplay is very similar to the gameplay mechanics in Sonic Colors. However, instead of using wisps to fill up your speed bar, you grab rings to make you run faster. Modern Sonic's levels change from 3D to 2D style of gameplay, and while there's lots of running involved, there's also some platforming parts. The only minor problem I have with Modern Sonic is controlling him in 3D while he's running at full speed. Moving him left and right at this point feels like ice skating on rollerblades. It's very slippery and it's very difficult. Well now that I'm done talking about the gameplay mechanics of each character, let's talk about the levels. Each level in the game is based off of the levels from previous Sonic games. However, the level structure is different so it's not like you're playing the exact same level as before, but the theme of each level is still the same. The levels themselves are based off of the Sonic games that appeared on the Genesis era, the Dreamcast era, the GameCube era, and today's time period. Even the bosses you fight are bosses that appeared in past Sonic games. If you're familiar with any of the Sonic games from the past, chances are you're probably going to get a huge chunk of nostalgia factor out of this game. The last thing I should mention about the level design is that the levels themselves are huge. So if you like the levels in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you'll probably feel right at home with this game. Besides levels, there's also ways of beating the game with 100% completion. One of the items that you need to collect in order to beat the game 100% is red rings. Uh, no, not those red rings. Those red rings. The red rings are very similar to the star coins in New Super Mario Bros. There are five red coins scattered within each level and you'll have to do quite a bit of exploring because some of these red rings are hidden very well. There's also tons of different types of missions for each character, and also there's a lot of unlockable features such as artwork, cutscenes, music, and so on. There's also a store that sells upgrades, that's if you have enough credits, but you earn credits by completing levels throughout the game. However, I think the coolest unlockable throughout this entire game has got to be the Sega Genesis controller. And you're probably wondering to yourself, what the heck does a Sega Genesis controller do? Well, besides being able to hook up to an Atari 2600, an Atari 7800, a ColecoVision, a Commodore 64, a Sega Master System, well, well, you get the idea. 
The Sega Genesis controller can be used to hook up to a Sega Genesis. And it just so conveniently happens that there's a magical floating possessed Sega Genesis right in the game. When you plug the Sega Genesis controller into the Sega Genesis, you'll have the ability to play Sonic 1. Yep, that's right, you get to play Sonic 1 on Sonic Generations. That's like getting two games on one disc. But how exactly did they manage to fit this whole entire cartridge and a big giant game into this one CD is way beyond me. Because Sonic 1 is a completely different game on its own, I'm not going to review it in this review. Maybe some other day I'll review Sonic 1, but for the time being, I gotta finish talking about Sonic Generations. One last thing I have to say about the Sega Genesis and Sonic Generations is that it's not like a real Sega Genesis where you can take out a cartridge and replace it with a different game. The only Genesis game you can play is Sonic 1, which makes sense because Sega wanted to introduce the first Sonic game to the audience that is new to Sonic games. But damn, even if you could play different types of Sega Genesis games on Sonic Generations, I would have loved to play Robocop vs. Terminator on my copy of Sonic Generations. Now let's talk about the time trial modes. There's regular time trial mode where you have to beat any level you want as fast as possible, and you get to upload your high score to the online leaderboards. There's also 30 second time trial mode where you have to try and run the farthest amount of distance within the 30 second time limit. If there was any other online capability I wish this game had, it would be the two-player split-screen mode where you and someone else have to race against each other for different kinds of levels, kind of like the multiplayer mode in Sonic 2. Now before I go to the conclusion of the review, I also want to quickly mention a few small features in this game. In the Xbox 360 version and PS3 versions, there's tons of different types of achievements that you can unlock. There's always a hard mode for each boss battle that you can try out whenever you defeat a boss, and also you can play this game in 3D but you need a 3D TV to use this feature. <laughs> In conclusion, Sonic Generations is a game that certainly doesn't disappoint, especially on the 20th anniversary. The game isn't perfect, but it's still a great game. The game is a little bit short, and it'll probably take you about 4 or 5 hours to beat the game. But on the other hand, there's lots of missions and there's so many different ways of getting 100% completion that it does increase the length of the gameplay. Not only that, the levels themselves are fun to replay over again, and practicing speedruns in this game is very amusing. Sonic fans will be going on a trip down memory lane while being pleased about this game. Even if you don't have a lot of knowledge about Sonic games in general, this game is still worth considering checking out. I'm pretty sure there's a free demo of the game on the Xbox Live Marketplace, so you can check it out and see if the game is any good or not. Now before I give this game my rating out of 10, I just want to close off this review by saying thanks for watching, this is Nintendo Guy saying take care, see you later, and here's the rating.